Let's go back in time. Today I want to share with you a song that was originally written and recorded in 1958 by the great Eddie Cochran. Now he co-wrote this song with his manager at the time, but we have a little twist because we're not going to be taking a look at Eddie's version today. We're going to take a look at the Who's cover of this song from their iconic album, Live at Leeds. Let's get straight into it. So we've got three chords and the opening part sounds like this. All right, so we're just gonna use three chords here. Let me break them down for you. The first chord is an A chord, and I'm gonna play starting with the fifth string open, then two, two, two. I'm just using my index finger here to lay flat. Then I don't play the first string or the sixth string. I mute that with my thumb. So that's the first chord, the A chord. Then we're gonna shift to a D chord, just from the fourth string down, open, two, three, two. Then we've got an E chord. Here I play all six strings, open, two, two, one, open, open. Now sometimes I play that chord like this. I just use two fingers and I sort of mash down my finger here and get both of those notes. That's an advanced trick, but I'm still just playing E like this. So we got A, D, and E. Now those are what we call the one, four, and five in the key of A major. This song is in the key of A. It starts in A. It's a surprise, it's coming later. So here we're starting on the A and then we switch to the D on what we call the and of two. So it's gonna go one and two and. Okay, it's a syncopated rhythm there. We hit the A chord, do a rest, and then on the and of two, play the D. One and two and. I'm using all down strums there with my strum hand. Then we do the same thing going E to A, the same rhythm. One and two and three and four. And that's essentially the main riff there. So one and two and three and four and one and two. And. So it's like short, let it ring, then short, let it ring. Okay, then from there, you can build in with a strum hand and add some more energy. And the main rhythm that I'm gonna be using is what's called an eighth note rhythm, which means we're gonna take one beat and split it into two parts. We're gonna go one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. That's just all downs with the strum hand. So what I do is I take that figure, the one and two and three and four and one and two and, and I just let everything kind of ring out in between and just keep the strum hand going. So like one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm strumming the A chord and then I'm kind of just playing like the bass string, the lower string. So one and two and, Okay, then I strum the whole D chord, then I kind of just play the bass strings of the D chord. So it's like one and two and three and four and. Okay, one and two. Then you can do cool licks like Pete Townsend would do this little lick there. So what that is, is you play the E chord and then you do a little bend on the third fret of the low E string. It's kind of a bluesy pull there. Then you play the open strings, kind of just open there, no fretting, and then go to the A chord like this. Okay, so it's B, little bend, open strings, A. Now, when I play the E like this, it actually makes it easier for me to grab that bend because I'm using my ring finger. If I do it like this, I have to use my pinky. And to me, my pinky is actually weaker than my ring finger. This finger is just a stronger finger, so it's easier for me to do that. You could also just play E7 if you want to add that lick and you don't want to do the fancy technique that I'm doing. So, backing up, here's what it sounds like when you just play it straight, you know, with the rests in between, and then when you fill it out with more fancier blues riffs. Here we go. So. Rhythm.
Now, of course, you have to play those with the full windmill arm. It's incredible. Go check out Pete Towns and do it. It's pretty awesome. No, but I wanna make a point here. This is a total blues lick, and that's coming out of the blues scale, which we're gonna talk about later when we get into the solo, but if you haven't worked out your blues scales yet, I wanna give you a gift that's really gonna help you out with this. And what it is is my free blues scale PDF guide. And on it, I show you the five patterns that I use to map out the entire fretboard. And you use these five patterns and you can go up and down the neck. It works for soloing, it works for understanding the fretboard, and it works for little licks like you're seeing in this song. So once you know the scales, you can be playing a song and be like, oh, I, I identify that right away. And it helps you put all of it together. So you can get this completely for free. Just go to johnmcclennan.com slash bluescales and grab that as my gift to you. So you've got the main part. Then from there, we're gonna play just the A chord and we're gonna do two bars of a palm muted, just eighth note rhythm like this. Okay, so I'm just going one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. And then I tie in the riff. And this really just goes along with the melody. So what happens is Roger Daltrey comes in singing with the melody. So when he's singing, the guitar is tamed down a little bit, it's just sort of chunking along with the rhythm. Then when the f vocal phrase stops, then the guitar plays the figure and it's sort of like a call and response. From there, we go on to the B section of the bridge and that goes like this. One, two, three, four. Says you got to work late. No cure for the summertime blues. All right, so this is the B section here. It's just a little sort of refrain from the first part. What we do is we go to a D chord, but instead of playing the D like this, which is how we played it for the main riff, we're gonna go to a blues rhythm pattern. Now the basic kind of essential pattern to know is that one, it's just one and two and three and four and. So I'm playing the open fourth string and the second fret on the third string. And then I move that second fret on the third string up to fret four on beats two and four like this. One and two and three and four and. But Pete Townsend does a lot of variations. Like sometimes he'll go. And walk it up to four, five, four, that's like two times on each fret. And he'll mix them up, so he might go like. Then he hits the A chord and does a rest. And that's where the lyrics go, my boss says no dice, son, you gotta work late. So we've got a lot of rests in here. We hit the A chord, we go one, two, three, four, you gotta work late, A, D. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, rest, two, three, four, one. Okay, we hit that A on beat four, and then we go to a D chord, and this is a classic Pete Townsend sound. Here you go. Ain't no cure for the... Okay, so this is a D chord, and we just let it ring out. One, two, three, four, and one, and two, and three. And then we have some rhythm, so one, and two, and three, and four. On the and of four, we're gonna play a D sus four, and that means we just add down our pinky to the third fret of the first string. So one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three. Okay, so all on the off beats there, the and of four, the and of one, the and of two, and then take that pinky off and strum a D, just a D natural there, on beat three. So one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and. Then we hit the A. Ain't no cure for the summertime blues. So one, two, and three, and 
four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and rest, two, three, four, rest, two. Then we need to hit the riff. And those are the two sections. So let me back up and play this bridge or this B section, starting from that D chord with the blues rhythm. Remember, we got a lot of rests in there for, for the lyrics to come in in between. Here we go. A one, two, three, four. It says no die, son, you got to work late. A, D, two, three. Cure for the summertime blues. All right, so then everything goes back and repeats. Now, after that, we go on to the guitar solo, and the guitar solo is over that riff, so. Basically what's going on here is he starts off playing out of the A minor blues scale. Okay, and that's gonna be here on the low E string, five, eight, and then five, six, seven, five, seven, five, seven, eight, five, eight, five, eight. And again, if you need help with this, grab my blues scale PDF guide at the link below. It's gonna show you how to play those patterns all over the neck. Now, Pete is doing a lot of double stops. So you hear licks like this, where he slides in from the third fret to the fifth fret on the second string, but also plays the open E with it. And then you hear like. These are uh, double stops here. What's what I call a unison bend. It's a, really a Jimi Hendrix sound to me. That's where I first learned it. But it's basically the seventh fret bending up on the third string to match the fifth fret on the second string. Okay, now here comes that surprise I was mentioning. What happens here is we change keys. We go from the key of A up to the key of B. And this basically takes the chords, you move all the chords up a whole step. So what's gonna happen to our main riff now is it's gonna go B to E, F sharp to B. Okay, that's a bar chord here, two, four, four, four. Then an E chord, which we know, then F sharp, two, four, four, three, two, two back to B. And then we have this. All right, so from there, we basically just repeat the song, but now up a whole step. So what I'm doing there is I'm just, that's like the A that we were doing before, where we had the call and response in the verse, but now we're in B. So we go B, B to then the riff. Now in the key of B, you can get this. And you can play this cool little, start with the open fifth string, and then hammer into that second fret. It's a total just, you know, Beatles-y rock and roll move. Okay, so then what I'm doing there is we go to the B section, but again, in the new key. So before we were going D, but now if we move D up two frets, D becomes E, so you could do it here. Or I, I also like doing it just down here. It's just the blues rhythm pattern on the low E string and the second fret of the A string. Two, three, four, one, two, three. E to B. Three, four, one, two, three, four. 
So remember to start in the key of A and then work out those chords as they feel comfortable, then try and go to the key of B. And this is a great exercise. It's something that you'll run into in a ton of songs and you wanna be able to change keys. You'll see how the relationship of the chords stays the same, but it's just shifted to basically a new starting note or a new place on the neck. And that's gonna help you put this together along with my free blue scale PDF guide. So don't forget to grab that. Just go to johnmclennan.com slash blues scales. And this is gonna show you those patterns so you can practice soloing and you can practice working out these notes on the fretboard. Again, just go to johnmclennan.com slash blues scales and grab that as my gift to you. As always, thanks for watching and for more Who, check out this video next.